China's astonishing expansion into the 1.35 million square miles of the South China Sea and the militarization of the region over the past few years have fostered a complex security environment. The initial phase of growing complexity was based on geopolitical interest and expansion, especially during U.S. President Barack Obama's second term. Although it has been debated that regional tensions may remain stable because China has stopped its land acquisition efforts to the south, complex regional security environments can enter a new phase of increasing tension and complexity during 2019. This next phase can emerge as a result. China's dedicated urge to consolidate its profits in the South China Sea SCS, through the use of military and political power simultaneously with sharp threats as a result of military patrols in quantum leaps in the spreading of reconnaissance aircraft, destroyers of guided missiles and military equipment banks. Despite the momentary pause in adding to the treasure trove of SCS features, Chinese behavior in the SCS exemplifies the goal of achieving regional dominance. However, Beijing has not yet reached the level of control it seeks in a strategically vital waterway. In areas where five other parties, Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, Malaysia and Taiwan, have made territorial claims. China's position remains under pressure and its territorial assets are under continued threat. Indeed, Beijing's protests over what it saw as a provocative U.S. attack, which China has treated as naked military aggression, served as a strong indication that Chinese assets in the SCS in the interests of the state in the region remain vulnerable. As long as external threats still exist, acquisitions and build-up can be expected to move forward. With China's initial 10-year island development campaign, the next phase of China's SCS expansion is military consolidation and fortification of its territorial assets, gathering many small islands that were previously considered uninhabitable, including strategic Scarborough Shoal, Wang Yandao, lying only 140 miles west of the large Philippine island of Luzon and currently under development. The establishment of military bases has culminated in the creation of China's strategic triangle. Even with the construction of aircraft bases, detection systems and weapons delivery systems, the impact of China's methodical efforts on SCS has failed to produce major changes in the status quo of power relations. Over the past few years, China has expanded its coral reefs and atolls to thousands of hectares, but its military presence and readiness is far from adequate levels to claim control over the entire SCS. The process may be longer than expected. The acquisition and development of the island has not mitigated the existing territorial claims of other countries that share the sea. Also these claims, supported by partners and distant allies, are likely to disappear in the near or far future. The combination of three factors exponentially increases the potential for further militarization in the SCS, China's expansion in the past, and ongoing consolidation, which collides with persistent claims by countries located adjacent to the SCS. The Washington Declaration that the principle of freedom of law navigating international customary law must be preserved, and Beijing's departure from the past promise not to develop SCS assets further. Civil and rescue operations have become the main justification for the construction of ongoing military installations and the placement of weapons and weapons systems including sophisticated warplanes, ground-to-air missiles, SAM, anti-ship missiles, ballistic, and technology vandals. Regardless from President Xi Jinping's guarantee that China's territorial assets will not be militarized, Beijing has indicated that future UN peacekeeping missions involving the People's Liberation Army PLA, will require additional bases. These steps are key to strengthening China's anti-access, rejection capacity, A2, AD. In light of China's inability to match all aspects of U.S. military capability, at least in qualitative terms, though numerically speaking, China possesses extraordinary military strength in the short term. 
A military presence beyond China's immediate borders is a logical and necessary rung if China hopes to project its power to a level that goes beyond parity in the SCS. China's military investment continues to increase in the country, while facing a cluster of opposition off its eastern shores, has only a single front on which to focus. Such incidents as the arrest of Huawei's chief financial officers, Meng Wanzhou and China's persistent trade dispute with the United States have generated considerable attention, providing useful foliage for Chinese activities in the SCS. As a result, China's interests in the SCS have become relatively peripheral in the media. Disruptive issues also give China valuable time to build a stronger military presence in their ownership in SCS rather than trying to expand and pursue additional reclamation projects. China has turned to other methods to launch its claims south in the past, with Brunei deepening its economic dependence on China through financial and trade arrangements. On the wave of political sticks, China not only gets a portion of its own interests but also from Brunei. While acquiring allies that are badly needed in the SCS region that can remain silent or sway in the direction that Beijing wants strategic interests. The Philippines has been together in China after being successfully seduced by the China Belt and Road Promises. The grandiose development strategy is a political instrument, and also an economic initiative and where Beijing can increase its political influence on the policy trajectory of SCS countries in the context of the SCS claim in territory. Vietnam, however, remains equally challenging and strong in its approach to the SCS with a note challenging China and a systematic effort to turn SCS into its own lake. Vietnam's efforts to forbid Chinese businesses in the SCS, especially the creation of further artificial islands, waves of warships, and the potential for the establishment of an air defense identification zone, ADES, show the boundaries of Beijing's friendly pressure on others to surreptitiously move ships they flag of the disputed area. China has shown that there is another way to move forward in the SCS and expand its de facto control. Dragging formal talks and buying neighbors is only two possible tactics. Four years after Russia annexed Crimea from Ukraine, Moscow has been and continues to use similar tactics to tighten its grip and further strengthen the Black Sea Peninsula. Likewise, the idea that China will maintain its presence in various features of the SCS and increase its military presence in the show cannot be easily said especially since the peak of China's efforts to date has significantly increased the Chinese military presence in the SCS and drastically increased the period of peace in Beijing's war position. Scott N. Romaniak is a postdoctoral researcher in security studies at the China Institute, University of Alberta. His research focuses on global security and the role of the Chinese military. China's political, economic and cyber security policies and the rise of security architecture in Asia, robotic systems in international security and technology and the future of warfare. Tobias Burgers is a doctoral candidate at the Otto Sur Institute Free University of Berlin, where he examines the rise and use of cyber and robotic systems in security and future relations in military matters.